Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. This is something of a more impromptu video, something a little bit more informal. Don't consider this a formal critique or anything along those lines. Because I just got off a three hour session of playing the Doom campaign on stream. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about my very, very early experiences with this game. Because they were surprisingly positive. He says as he sits in front of a door that he can't get through. One of the rare moments where the game actually stops the action. It's a little bit of a break before the absolute mania of these large, expansive levels filled with demonic horrors. Welcome to, I suppose, what you would call Doom 4. And what I would consider to be one of the most surprisingly good single-player FPS campaigns that so far I've played in quite some time. It's been a great surprise, uh, kind of like the campaign for Wolfenstein, actually, if you recall, back in the day, 2014, if I recall correctly for that game, when I was surprised by just how damn good that was. Wasn't it 2015, maybe? That game was phenomenally good, as is, as it turns out, Doom's campaign. It is surprisingly quick. The movement speed is surprisingly high. You know, it's a little bit shocking, actually. I was a little bit surprised to actually experience that initially. I recall when I went into the first level, not only was I moving incredibly quickly, but I was in the action about five seconds, which to me is just shocking, actually, in a modern FPS. Unbelievably so. No arbitrary stealth section, nothing like that. It gave you a gun in the first five seconds of the game and you shot a demon in the freaking head. I was like, oh. Oh, okay. Uh, this, this, this appears to be a first-person shooter. This appears to be perhaps a Doom game. And it only got better from there on in. I was encountering demons on a very regular basis, sometimes quite a few of them. Or a reasonable number. And bear in mind, I'm only playing on the normal difficulty. There are actually five difficulty modes. This is difficulty mode two. So there are significantly harder modes available with crazier enemies and lots more of them. So I was surprised even at the lower difficulty levels to be facing off against, frankly, quite a few different enemy types at any given time. I was surprised at how quick the combat was. I was surprised at how nimble and mobile I was. I was able to... Jump chasms with the greatest of ease. I actually have a double jump right now. I, I went back and yes, that's a secret. Yes, they have those. I went back and decided, hey, I'll play one of the earlier levels because I sort of know where I'm going rather than getting lost on one of the others and, and ending up wasting your time by doing that. Plus, this level was awesome and I want to play it again and maybe find a few more of the secrets here and there, which I may very well be able to do. I was surprised at just how much jumping the game allowed me to do. Thankfully, I have double jumps. So I'll be able to very easily traverse this now. It's like, wow, I can I can leap around. I can circle strafe. I can dodge projectiles as they fly at me rather than just being attacked and destroyed by hit scan enemies over and over again. This is, this is wonderful. I feel like this combat's actually skillful. And once I started picking up weapons, I was thinking to myself, wow, okay, this, this game's got quite a kick to it when it comes to its weapon types. I was very impressed by that. The initial pistol was disappointing and I thought, oh no, is that going to set the tone for the rest of the game? But no, within the first few minutes it gives you a shotgun and you suddenly realize, no, no, this is a, not a game that is going to be messing around with weak weapons. This is a heavy assault rifle. This heavy assault rifle is upgraded with micro missiles. Now, not only is it upgraded with micro missiles, but I've hit the tab button right here. You'll be able to clearly see that it has a number of different benefits. If I head over to micro missiles here, this is one of two modifications available for this gun. Each of the guns has two mods available. You find a field drone and unlock a mod of your choice. I unlocked micro missiles instead of aim down sights because, you know, it's a Doom game and not Call of Duty. And I chose Micro Missiles and I got the little upgrades here. And you can acquire these different upgrade tokens to 
actually get these upgrades and they're acquired through combat skill by just doing cool kills and unlocking challenges and things like that so i got ammo efficiency advanced loader these are all boring this on the other hand once i unlocked all three of these i was able to do a challenge which involved sticking four enemies in five seconds with micro missiles Tony Stark style. Once I did that, I unlocked bottomless missiles, meaning that instead of a rack of six, I could just keep firing the damn things until I ran out of ammo, and they used two bullets each with the ammo efficient mod. So you can spam out a huge amount of micro missiles, which give you a wide plethora of explosions all over the damn maps. Yeah, kind of like that. Or like this. Yeah, the gun is incredibly fun to use. I was actually surprised to find that a gun that I did not expect to be particularly enjoyable was actually one of the most fun guns in the game. You know what else I didn't expect to enjoy? That. The glory kill system. I was incredibly skeptical going into this game as to whether or not this glory kill system would be a waste of time. But what surprised me is they kept the animations nice and short, not overly indulgent, and it actually keeps the pace of the combat up. So if you don't know, d performing a glory kill or gibbing an opponent as well, and I say gib, not jib. I'm sorry, that's just how I get. That's how I roll. It's been ingrained in my mind for the last 20 years. It's never going to change. You're just going to have to deal with it. What I was surprised to find is that it actually kept the pace of the combat up because every time you do a glory kill or jib an opponent, it will actually spawn a bunch of health upgrades. And that's going to allow you to quickly heal up. That's basically how you gain most of your health packs in this game. And, that's, and that was awesome to me because... As I kept up my pressure on the enemy, I was able to continue to fight and I didn't have to go and hunt down health packs. Now, I think some people actually enjoy the aspect of hunting down health packs in a maze-like environment, but there are still things you can hunt down here. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you can go and hunt down weapon upgrades. You can go and hunt down the elite guard. You can go and hunt down the, I think, ardent energy upgrades, as they're called. There are all sorts of things to find, and there are, of course, a bunch of secrets on every level, and the more that you find, the more unlocks you're going to get. So it's not as if there aren't things to do. There's plenty of exploration to be found, but they decided, you know what, we're going to make sure that health is not something that you have to keep looking around the level for. You don't have to slow down your play at any point as a result of running out of HP. If you keep killing, you'll be able to continue to roll. And you know what? That actually works. It, it genuinely does. I was very doubtful that it would, but it ended up being surprisingly effective. Shockingly so, really. It really does the job, and it sounded gimmicky in theory. It sounded canned, but no, they exercised surprising restraint and made the system really work, and there's a good variety of these kills available, and they are really satisfying to pull off, I have to admit. But of course, if you don't want to do it, you can just shoot them in the frickin' face. And if you blow the enemy up, you will also get health from them as well. So that's not the only way to do it. But that's still pretty cool, right? And also, you can beat someone to death with that own arm, which I thought was pretty neat. So what do you got? Well, <clears throat> you have surprisingly expansive levels with some interesting jumping challenges and little environmental puzzles here and there. You've got key cards to discover, there's plenty of exploration involved, and yet there's also plenty of combat. You'll occasionally enter an arena whereby you'll fight a ton of enemies. You will have the occasional little monster box here and there. Nothing too crazy, but you'll be challenged consistently. And you will have a surprisingly... Oh, oh, close one. Surprisingly varied combat system. You know, that's what really shocked me about this. I didn't expect the gunplay to, one, be as impactful as it is. And it is. And I haven't even got some of the more powerful weapons yet. But secondly, be as varied as it is. Because you can switch between these two different upgrades, if you happen to have them. For the shotgun, I have both the upgrades available. I'm going to swap out here. There we go. I quickly swap out. And now, my shotgun is also a grenade launcher. And this lava is, is, is not friendly to me whatsoever. But hey, you get to see the burning to death animation, which is very pleasant. There you go. So I can switch between a grenade launcher, my regular shot, and a try shot, which can all be individually upgraded and then given an ultimate ability at the end. So lots of different options in combat. Lots of variety available there. And of course, that really keeps the pace up. Not to mention... 
It's got that great arcade feel to it. And that is accentuated very much so by this focus on the idea of challenges. And, I mean, what is basically, for all intents and purposes, score, you know? It's asking you to set a score. It's asking you to do well. It tracks your combat progress up to the top right there. You'll notice how many little upgrade points and little benefits you get from doing really well in combat. You can get up to five stars in a level, and that will reward you. So it's skills to pay the bills, really. And, you know, the, I think there was a risk with this game that it would have been taken a little bit too seriously, perhaps, you know? It would have been developed with a serious, edgy mindset. And you know what? It's not. It's It's been developed as a game that is... Sort of a lovely little throwback, actually, that really embraces the ideas of old, even the way that the character actually interacts with the story elements. The other NPCs are super serious, and you only really communicate with them usually through the visor, through a little radio communication, or sometimes you'll actually see them behind the glass or whatever, kind of very Bioshock-esque there. But what really surprised me about it was that your character seems to not give a damn like, he will deliberately smash things. Like, he's angry. He's genuinely pissed off at what's going on. He is a ball of rage. He seems to only want to rip and tear. That is his sole priority in life. I was like, wow. Uh, I am surprised. They are making absolutely no effort whatsoever to develop this character in any way, shape, or form. And you know how bloody refreshing that is? Wow, there's no character development. That's a feature. It's a Doom game. Why would we care about character development? The guy specifically asked, Oh, you must preserve this. And he just smashes it. He kicks it. He kicks it in. Oh, you want to rip and tear? There we go. <laughs> I'll talk about the chainsaw in a minute. He, he is just there to destroy. That is his only purpose. Doom guy is here to smash things. And in a, I suppose a, environment where games are focusing more and more on narrative. It's actually really awesome to see one that's clearly focused almost entirely on gameplay. Not not a hundred percent. You know, I mean there are definitely Hello, Hell Knight. There are definitely parts of the game where you feel like, oh god, it's it's trying to give me exposition again. You know you'll be locked in a room and you'll be told this thing. But it's not actually that frequent. In fact, I only ran across, I think, two sequences like that in the three hours of play, which I was very happy about, I might add. The rest of the game was all about doing this, which is hilarious and will continue to be hilarious probably until the end of time. Thank you very much. I'll have that lovely jubbly. I believe I picked up a yellow key, so I'm going to be going in this direction. I heard demons. There's demons around here somewhere. We will fight the demons. No, John, you are the demons. Oh, man. It's so lovely to see a game that's so obviously focused on gameplay and great shooting mechanics. Now, the, the game that was coming out this year, and still is by the looks of it, that I thought was going to fill that niche for me was Shadow Warrior. But as it turns out, we've got another one. And I think when I compare what I've played of Shadow Warrior, including the first one and, of course, the demonstration of the second one at PAX, I find that Doom seems to have a, a great focus on really awesome level design. You know, it's not open world, but it's clearly sort of labyrinthine. It's maze-like. It's encouraging you to explore and look in every nook and cranny to find upgrades and all sorts of- Ha! Ah, hell Knights! All sorts of Hell Knights, yes. Uh, have a rocket. Or, or, or ten. We could, we could probably do that. Yes! All sorts of Hell Knights. And little beasties and little upgrades and ammunition and all sorts of things like that. And that's wonderful. And I'm actually kind of surprised at how smooth the exploration experience is. I don't feel like I get stuck all that often, although there's still some fairly complex navigation. It's got a pretty damn good map that can be both three-dimensional and two-dimensional, which is going to give you indicators as to where some of the secrets are. You can upgrade your navigation to spot some of the collectibles, which is kind of neat, and you can replay the levels to find others as well, which is what I'm currently doing. Or you can go to 2D if you're not much of a 3D person. There we go. And that will certainly help you out a great deal. Let's uh, shut... I think this is already shut down here by the looks of it. Yeah, I, th I think we're... We're good. Yeah, we're good here. You can continue to move on. 
So it's going to satisfy those, I think, that are looking for the more complex maze-like experience of Doom. It's, it's not as complex, but it's a hell of a lot more complex than most modern shooters. This is no corridor shooter. Make no mistake. It's got some nice wide open areas outdoors, just like Doom 2 had really, but it also has some great indoor areas as well. Some really cool arenas, some nice platform traversal, a great verticality aspect to it that even Doom didn't really have a huge amount of. It's more of a quake-like feature really. And of course, a wonderful pacing to it. I am actually loving this so far. And it's, it's just giving me an unholy amount of joy to play through this and just absolutely obliterate the demonic hordes as I go. I can't wait to get hold of the other weapons. I'm sure the chain gun's going to be a lot of fun, especially with its ultimate upgrades. The weapon upgrade system is just so satisfying to be able to continually improve the guns that you really, really like. You're encouraged to experiment and pick different upgrades and see what they'll do and then of course you're not locked into a path you can grab the other upgrade and just swap between them as I demonstrated with the shotgun earlier so you can use both functions on it if you so desire if that's how you want to roll and of course I can't wait to see what some of the more crazy runes do I think that's that's gonna be very interesting to look at oh god it's a hell knight please get it away have many micro missiles there we go that might do the job and stomp him there we go. I can't wait to get up tomorrow and play the rest of this. Not only that, but it seems like it's got a hell of a lot of replay value with the amount of collectibles as well as five difficulty levels, two of which are only unlocked once you've beaten the game, I believe. You know, I didn't think much of this game's multiplayer, but its single player is quintessentially id. There's no doubt about it as far as I'm concerned. You know, this is a really awesome return to form from a company that has stumbled lately. There's no doubt about it. It's taken lessons from some of its titles that didn't perhaps do as well, like, say, Rage, for instance, by incorporating these really great animations and staggers and these aspects of the way that you interact with the characters. And by interact, I mean interact with bullets, lots of bullets, sometimes rockets, sometimes chainsaws. And it really makes you feel like a god of death, a reaper, a holy reaper, here to fend off the hordes of hell itself. It's a hell of a first-person shooter, folks. It really is. And my doubts are rapidly melting away as I play more and more and more of it. I think I might be in love! Not with him. Go away. Just, 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 yeah, just get him. And yes, it does have power-ups, and yes, one of them is Berserk, and yes, you can punch this demon's head off if you happen to have it. I unfortunately don't right now, but hey. What a wonderfully paced, what a gameplay focused, what a kinetic, what an impactful first-person shooter we have on our hands here. What a damn return to form this is. What a chainsaw. It's a limited-use item that lets you rip and tear through enemies and causes a giant loot explosion whenever you bloody well do it. What a cool way to manage a very powerful melee weapon. Oh, that does not get old. And neither does this. God, I can't wait to play the rest of this. This is great. I'll bring you a full and hopefully more balanced critique of this at some point in the near future but as I mentioned in my previous video you know nobody got review codes for this so I've only had a few hours to play all I can say is that if I'm gushing over this damn thing it's because it's that damn good so far I dearly hope it keeps up its momentum for the remainder of the campaign I really really genuinely do because holy hell Don't know what that's all about. Don't care. <laughs> what a game. Mm, what a campaign. What a shooter. We might have our new Wolfenstein on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. It's entirely possible. There you go. There's 20 minutes of just completely unrepentant gushing about how good this campaign is so far. It's so nice to be surprised. So nice to be pleasantly surprised. So nice to once again rip and tear. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, by all means, do feel free to click the like button. If you did not, the dislike button is right over there. Why the hell would you click that? We'll see you next time.